de 8 ans coupable de viol et de meurtre au premier degré a été transféré dans un pavillon de ressourcement n'ayant même pas de clôture. C'est si peu sécurisé qu'on a dénombré 18 évasions entre 2011 et 2016 dans, des, dans ce genre de pavillon. Dans notre motion, demandons à ce que cette décision soit renversée comme le fait le gouvernement ontarien de façon unanime lundi dernier. Ma question est simple. Le premier ministre va-t-il voter en faveur de notre motion comme le demandent les Canadiens et Canadiennes partout au pays? Oui ou non? Tous, évidemment, de tout cœur, avec la famille de Tory Stafford pour la perte qu'elle qu a subie. La détenue a été transférée de la sécurité maximale à la sécurité moyenne en 2014 sous le gouverne, la gouverne des conservateurs. Elle demeure en sécurité moyenne aujourd'hui. Comme l'ont démontré les articles médiatiques, la loi sur le système correctionnel et la mise en liberté sous condition ne permet pas aux politiciens de prendre des décisions au sujet de transfert de détenus individuels. Le ministre a demandé à la commissaire de s'assurer que cette décision est conforme aux politiques en place depuis longtemps. Monsieur le Président, voici ce qu'a écrit le père de la petite Victoria en fin de semaine dernière, le Premier ministre. De père à père, pourriez-vous vous agenouiller devant la pierre tombale de votre enfant, sachant qu'elle a passé les trois dernières heures de sa vie à supplier maman ou papa de la sauver? Pouvez-vous dormir tranquille en sachant cela? Je prie que pour pour que vous fassiez ce qui est juste, que cette injustice soit corrigée et que la meurtrière soit renvoyée derrière les barreaux. Monsieur le Président, le Premier ministre a le pouvoir d'agir. Va-t-il voter oui ou non à la motion que nous avons déposée ici en cette chambre? Comme tous les Canadiens à travers le pays, nous sommes de tout cœur avec Rodney Stafford. La détenue a été transférée de la sécurité maximale à la sécurité moyenne en 2014 sous les conservateurs. Elle demeure en sécurité moyenne aujourd'hui. Les conservateurs devraient savoir que le ministre n'intervient pas dans ces décisions, car c'est exactement ce que le député de Bellechasse, les Chemin Lévy, en tant que ministre, a affirmé dans le passé. Le ministre a demandé à la commissaire de revoir sa décision, mais comme l'a déjà dit la députée conservatrice de Kamloops, Thompson Caribou, le processus judiciaire indépendant doit suivre son cours sans qu'il y ait des gérances politiques. Continue to call on the Prime Minister to do the right thing and send Terry Lynn McClintock, the killer of eight year old Tory Stafford, back to prison. And while he and his public safety minister dither with this review and refuse to review the transfer that didn't occur in 2014, it occurred just a few months ago. McClintock is enjoying this uh, life in a healing lodge without offense. I ask the Prime Minister, on behalf of Tory's father and on behalf of Canadians, to do the right thing, to vote yes on our motion today and order McClintock back here, here. behind bars. Here, here. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives continue to play a very dangerous and, quite, quite frankly, repulsive game of politicizing a tragedy and speaking for others that they have no business speaking for. We uh, continue to state, obviously, uh, that this is a situation in which a previous Conservative government reclassified an offender from maximum security institution to a medium security institution. They are this individual is currently in a medium security facility. But as Stephen Harper's former... Order. I would ask the member for uh, Battle River Crowfoot and others uh, not to interrupt when someone else has the floor. Each side gets their turn and we have to listen whether we like what we hear or not, and that's kind of essential in a democracy. The Honourable Member for Barry Sound, Muskoka. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister accuses of games, but I remember being in the Ontario Legislature as an MPP when the Ontario Legislature, 18 years ago, voted unanimously to ask the federal government to stop a transfer of a cop killer to Club Fed. The Minister of Agriculture, who was Solicitor General at the time, stood in this House and reversed the transfer. Why was that good enough 18 years ago? About why is he playing political games now and saying he, can, he cannot do anything on behalf of Tory Stafford's uh, family and on behalf of Canadians? Prime Minister. Shh. 
Speaker, as has been demonstrated, the Minister does not intervene on a case-by-case basis. And that, to, if we want to talk about things said in the past, let's talk about the Conservative member from Belchasse, Les Etchemins Levy, who said in his capacity as Public Safety Minister just a few years ago, I do not control the security classification of individual prisoners. Or perhaps the Conservatives will listen to Ben Perrin, who was Stephen, Harp, Stephen Harper's former lawyer, who himself said, I'm concerned with politicians being the ones who decide how any particular individual offender is treated. Honourable Member for Milton. Mr. Speaker, I've been listening to the excuses that the Prime Minister continuously gives to this House and to the Canadian public with respect to his unwillingness to transfer Terry Lynn McClintock from a healing lodge with no fences and no barriers back to where she came from, a Grand Valley institution with fences and bars. Mr. Speaker, I understand that the government won't be voting in favour of our motion today, but I'm wondering, does the Prime Minister know whether or not there's going to be some of his backbenchers who are going to see the light and know that this is a moral issue and that they should do the right thing? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I would indeed suggest that this is a moral issue. This is about the contrast between uh, a party and a government that respects the rules, that respects the independence of our judicial system, uh, that appreciates the professionalism of our correctional services, and a party of ambulance-chasing politicians who are, quite frankly, demonstrating a contempt for the principles of law and debate in this House that is inexcusable. The Honourable Member for Milton. Order. Well, Mr. Speaker, at least the Prime Minister can show some kind of emotion, even though it's self-righteous indignation that we would right. actually question him on an issue as important as making sure that convicted killers of children are in appropriate institutions both to protect the integrity of the system, of the justice system, but as well to protect the public and any visitors within that institution. If he's blind to it, get out of the way and let us go back to government and get this right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it was under the Conservatives that the decision was taken to reclassify from a maximum security to a medium security. Of course, Mr. Speaker, we, we point out that I'm sure they just followed the recommendations and the proper functioning of their public servants, of the professionals in our corrections agency when that transfer happened. All we are asking is that they continue to respect the system in place that we have asked be verified, uh, be followed up on to ensure that all the rules were appropriately followed.